Hello and welcome to On A Mission, the show where we share inspiring conversations with phenomenal women who are creating success and prosperity in their lives with purpose and passion. I'm Pauline Rodish, a success mindset coach and clinical hypnotherapist, and I'm on a personal mission to remind you that you are a beautiful soul and you have so much potential. And my intention for this show is to give you the nudge to answer your own calling and to rise up and take on your life's mission. So hello everybody and welcome to this episode of On A Mission. My name is Pauline Rodish and it's my great pleasure today to introduce you to a wonderful lady called Erica Buckley. Not that easy to find Erica's name because she really puts her brand and her passion and what she's on a mission with, which is Mum Tribe Ireland out there. And I found it difficult to find out who the woman was behind this amazing movement. And so it's Erica Buckley from County Cork that I want to introduce you to today. Erica, it's so amazing to meet you. How are you doing? Good. And thank you so much for having me. And now that you said that you can't find me, maybe I need to change that. <laughs> I think so, because, yeah, no, it's wonderful to see what you're doing. And obviously, I've been following you on Instagram in particular, because I'm obviously a mother to a teenage boy myself. He's 15. And I do realize I thought I thought perhaps at times maybe it was more for the new mums. But look, we're going to find out more about that anyway. But I'm delighted to hear that you are also supporting mothers of teenagers and beyond and everybody in between. So look, I'm really fascinated with what you do and your background is in marketing, which is amazing. You're still in marketing, which is also fantastic. But if you'd love to tell everybody how the Mum Tribe Ireland actually started, because you, you have a very, very good following on there. So hats off to you. Tell us about you. how to get going. Okay, so basically it started on Instagram. It's still on Instagram. That's our biggest platform still. Um, in 2018, I just decided that enough was enough I needed more support myself I'd been to the usual mom and baby groups and they were lovely but I wanted something extra um I've always been a very ambitious person and I always thought that there was more out there for me than just the nine to five and then also becoming a mom I didn't want to just be a mom as well so basically I started it um, because I wanted to connect mums together so when we started Instagram we had people following us and then they'd ask you know um do you think that you do a meetup and everyone can get together and we can have a chat in real life so we had the first ever meetup I think there was four of us there with our children and we got chatting uh, mums from lots of different backgrounds I went from there uh, to start a chat group then we had mums who were ambassadors for us that created little meetup groups in their locality. Um, as it stands today, we have 30 plus groups around the country. Uh, we have our Instagram page and our Facebook page and across those you reach around 60,000 people a week. Uh, we've developed a podcast. We have our website. We do lots of different activities. So there's yeah, it's been insane. It's been three years of really hard work. And uh, when I when I list out everything that we do, I can't quite believe that I've been the one who's done it. But I have, and I'm still here. I'm a lot greater than I was when I started. But um, yeah, I've definitely done a lot. <laughs> well, you know, that's because it's a passion and a mission of yours. And it came from a gap that you personally saw, if you like, in the market, even though it wasn't a business idea initially sure it wasn't and it has it yeah. has developed into that though for you how did that how did that evolve just walk us through that yeah so like you say it was basically a community support that I wanted to start with um obviously when you put yourself out there on social media and people get to know you and you create a following you'll be approached by brands to work with them and I've worked with some really amazing brands like I've had really pinch me moments um I've worked with Dermalogica Hunt Office now sponsor our new activity mom trade business to help women in business okay. um you know I just it went from meetups and having a coffee with a mum to then talking to another mum about a business that they might have or something that they're running and for me to be able to support that so like we do small business markets every month where people with businesses who wouldn't necessarily have the skills marketing and sales to get out there a bit more and um, now can 
you know, advertise with us. So yeah, it's gone from community support to now working with women in business. And it's amazing. Also, you know, we work with some really fantastic experts. So we have two activities that we do that with. Uh, Mum Tribe Connects is one. Basically, it started out as I wanted to connect the dots between a mother and the support that she needs. So be it with baby sleep or relationships or physical health or mental health, Mm -hmm. I want to connect those experts to that mum and then with wellness it was about you know it's not just about your physical health you know everyone has the six week checkup after they have their baby and more often than not the only thing the doctor talks about is contraception and do you have the baby blues but it goes far beyond that you know I'm in year four of being a mother you're in year 15 Mm -hmm. You, you have struggles all the time and you need to be able to do something for yourself to support yourself um I do yeah yeah absolutely and at the moment with covid and everything that's going on trying to work from home live from home you know teach from home there's so much that there's massive burnout and so i wanted to get experts that would help mums physically and mentally feel better within themselves so yeah that's why i started that and look it's amazing what you've achieved it's incredible and i have no doubt it's going to go even bigger and wider for you because i can i know that you have such a passion for what you actually do but how has covid actually impacted you how, what have you learned shall we say from covid personally mm-hmm. and then with mum tribe well, I mean, like everybody, COVID stopped me in my tracks completely last year. I don't think any of us thought that we'd still be here today no. in restrictions. You know, um, in a way, COVID obviously was incredibly tough because everyone has had to change their lives completely. You know, our kids are home. We're at home. We're trying to work. Um, for mum tribe, definitely, I could have sat back and said, OK, well, look, we can't do physical meetups we can't do physical events anymore. Let's just, you know, take a hiatus. But I didn't. I did for a while. I sat back and I thought, what could I do? Mm-hmm. And then obviously, because I have such like an open line of communication between mothers and myself on all our different channels, I was getting feedback from mom saying, you know, they're exhausted that their relationships were were being really tested. And I just thought to myself, no, there's there must be something that we can do. So everything went online. And, you know, it, I'm very lucky in a way that Mum Tribe started online and started on Instagram and we had that community behind us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything that we would have done physically, we now do online. So like that, um, our social meetups and our different events we do online asking advice can be online and you get moms from all around the country so personally for myself I found COVID very hard to deal with because I have parents that are cocooning and I work I I I work for them (laughs) I feel like it sometimes I look after them as well um and yeah listen I think you'd be lying if you said that you didn't struggle in the past 12 months I definitely have um and I think that's probably a reason why I started a lot of the activities we have done in the past 12 months because again like when I started mum tribe I feel like it can't just be me feeling like this there must be other people out there yeah. um so yeah that's how it's pivot that's all you can do you either pivot and, and or you would, you, would you say that would you say well I had to pivot myself but would you say that mum tribe actually grew in the last 12 months phenomenally yeah absolutely um I think because you'd have people at home and what what was our option to to talk to one another but only through a screen or through technology yeah. so I've had mums who said oh, I've actually recommended you to my best friend and um, you know she's going through a tough time or I've had people say oh I found you through an article because I'm really struggling and you know um, I heard about you and what you do and yeah it's absolutely COVID has probably helped us grow more than anything ever would because everything is shut down and people really need the support now and I think it's like you know even people were afraid to go to their GP to ask a question because they weren't sure if they could go to the surgery right at the start and I've had mums saying you know my baby's not feeding I don't know what to do and I've been able to point them in the direction of someone that can help so yeah I think um without Covid like we would obviously still be growing but not to the level that we are now so well it just proves you know it really proves the need for what you do that communication and that there's people there ready and waiting I absolutely think it's a phenomenal thing that you're actually doing I want to ask you a few questions 
Great. Uh, away from the business and then we'll come back because there's an event coming up and I'm sure that some people will be very interested in the event with Donald Ski and um, the wonderful chef and Mum Tribe. So just in terms of life, business, Erica, what would you say is the most difficult decision that you've ever had to make? I think probably when COVID hit and I just thought, you know, what am I going to do? Um, because we were building, you know, year on year, month on month, new groups, new activities, new people joining. And I probably, I could have sat back, at, like I said, and just said, no, look, we're not going to do anything, but I didn't. Um, putting yourself out there and starting new things when no one knows what's going on in the world is really nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, when I launch a new activity, even now I'm kind of going, is this going to work? Is everything going to be all right? Um, but I've just pushed through. So yeah, definitely COVID hitting and getting out there more is, uh, it's been difficult, but it's been really beneficial. And here's a question about, you know, a mistake perhaps that you've made. I mean, what would your biggest mistake have been, would you say, in relation to building this tribe? And what have you learned from it? I think my mistake probably was that I wanted to do everything myself. I still, I'm, I'm a total control freak. Look, I'm not, I'm not even going to joke about it. I am a total yeah. control freak. I always feel like, you know, if I don't have kind of a say in things that maybe it won't work out. And it's actually, yeah. you know, looking back. I basically built everything from scratch myself, our website, um, you know, everything, everything you see, I've done our artwork, everything. And in hindsight, the stress that that causes is massive. So I think a mistake would have been, you know, not setting myself up with the supports that I could have used. Yeah. Um, there's so many great resources out there and people to help. Um, I wish I had done that a bit earlier because we might have we might even be bigger now at this stage but uh, yeah that's something that in the last 12 months with everything with even personally childcare, and my relationship working my parents I want to get more support in and more help and it's definitely going to to help me but certainly for mum tribe as well I think without experts to help and guide me then we're not going to grow the way I want it to. So, um, yeah. You've a, you have a big vision for the future. But look, at, even though I put my own hand up there when it came to control freak, I have to admit that I'm a reformed control freak. I mean, I still believe, you know, you have to put your own slant on things when it mm. is something that you're, you know, you're passionate about and you're following yourself and you're, you're, you're creating yourself. But for certain, there are definitely people out there who can help enormously and it's most definitely worth it you know to invest in that but of course you're also very lucky that you had that background in marketing to help with a lot of the online stuff so absolutely you know, you're, you're well versed in that which is fantastic it's a good combination I just couldn't help but think there while we're chatting and listening to you the dad tribe is there such a thing um did the dads ever jump into mum tribe or how do you handle the dads that need a bit of support do you know what I know we're probably going to talk about it later but my my view for the future is that dads need support as well I know my husband when we had our son definitely struggled and um, it's massive change for him yeah. and uh, yeah it's something that I've asked him would he be interested in doing but he's not like me and um, <laughs> we have very different personalities but certainly down the line I'd love to be able to help fathers the way I help mothers because you yeah. know there's a lot of responsibility they, they on their shoulders care of as well because they really do need to be taken care of and I think to some degree they're a bit neglected out there when it comes to the parenting and it's not easy. I have four brothers and I've got my one son, you've got a son as well. So, you know, you have to think my, my husband was great. He was particularly good when Finn was um, six months plus, but I would say prior to that, it was very much my baby, you know, I mean, of course yeah. I held him and everything, but you know, I think they're a little bit nervous if you like. Um, and my husband is, has two children. He had two children before that my son was born. In fact, they were, 10 and 11 when Finn was born so we had gone through the baby um early stages in his you know when he was a, a father to them in the early days but nonetheless I do believe that men need help too yeah. and I, I mean we're going to be talking about Donald Skihan and I follow him too on Instagram he certainly seems to be a great dad he's got the two little boys hasn't he and they're absolutely yeah. beautiful so I've seen him well it certainly looks like his hands on anyway when he puts up the footages on on, on social media but again, look, just to the question I ask everybody, Erica, is when when do you feel 
that you're closest to God or your soul or that you're kind of working with a higher intelligence if you like when when do you sort of feel that connection so I would say for my soul um if I can help a mother in any way if I can help answer a question or or actually help them if I see someone struggling it's just it's my natural instinct to try and help them so if I leave that situation and I know that that person feels better or feels a bit more supported that's when I feel amazing so you know um we might have a DM come through from a mom who's really struggling and I'll be able to help them and you know I'm even I was in Tesco once and I saw a mum make eye contact with me while she was trying to pack her grocery shopping and she looked like she was on the verge of tears. By the way, I've also been that mum and I wish someone had stepped in and said, are you OK? Do you need help? And I did help her and I walked away and I just like it's not virtue signaling or anything. It's just me saying, you know, I felt amazing after that. Yeah. And that's the that's the thought behind everything that I do in Mum Tribe. I just want someone to feel better. And, you know, I struggled an awful lot when I had my son um, mentally and, you know, with relationships and boundaries and the usual bits and pieces that you have to deal with. And if I had the support that Mum Tribe has now, I think, you know, my path would have gone completely differently. So that's the way but, I feel. You see, the, the, the other way of looking at that too is, and I'm always getting people to look at perhaps why, you know, they're now doing what they're doing. Would it be fair to say, Erica, that because of you perhaps not, not having that accessible to yourself, it has caused you to create this amazing movement. Yeah. Wonderful. So it's, it's opened up a, a whole purpose for you, mm -hmm. uh, which you're clearly enjoying. But I do love what you're saying because there's a wonderful concept that I would teach as well. It's, it's just simple givers gain. And, you know, it, it's a way of doing business, but it's a way of living as well. Just when we're coming from that space of giving um, to help another individual, but also receiving so it's, it's important that we're also keeping that flow of give and receive because we need to take care of ourselves yeah. and you know that's so important as you have identified as well especially as, as a new mother but even a mother looking after your parents as you've said too during these challenging times plus running this business and you're also working you have your day job as well it's crazy yeah no you're you're you're, you're an amazing individual I have to say that and of course, I'm only meeting you for the first time, but certainly what you've shared with me prior to us hitting the record button on this, it's pretty amazing. So you should be really, really proud of yourself. You're, you're, you're absolutely super and you're definitely providing a uh, service. So I would so say that you are definitely on that sole purpose uh, mission. At least that's what I call it um, in my world, you know. So listen, what are you reading or what have you read that has inspired you? What book has really lit you up and has inspired you the most? Do you know what? Before I had my son, I was a complete bookworm. I love books. We have a book club, a mom trade book club. Ironically enough, I started the book club and I'm probably the only one who never gets to read the books because that life is just so busy at the moment. Um, so definitely one book I think that stands out for me is Girl Boss by Sophia Amoruso. And she's a very controversial character. She's done a lot of different things in her path. But when I read it, it, it kind of lit this fire within me. And I just read the story of this girl. She's in her 20s. And um, she decided to take vintage product and sell it on eBay. And she built it from sitting in her bedroom, taking photographs creating content to this huge company and I just thought to myself this has always been me anyway and uh, when I used to hear about my friends learning to drive I was straight in the car I, I wanted to learn when I hear about a woman you know starting from the ground up and being able to build this massive community or business I want to do it so I've reread it I think three times I wow. am um, Every time I kind of need a bit of a boost or I need to kind of go, you know, you need to cop on now, you can't actually do it. I read it again. But um, yeah, she subsequently sold her business. It's now called Nasty Gal. Um, I think it's owned by Boohoo. And I know that, you know, there's a lot of kind of sustainability kind of questions in around what they do. But just the base of how she started, I think is fantastic. So, um, okay. yeah. Wonderful. Now you might have the same answer, but I'll ask it anyway. If you were to have dinner with somebody, just someone all to yourself, that would be someone that you would be able to just jump into their mind, their brain, how they work. Who would that be? I actually have two and they're both Irish women with Irish, Irish. 
because uh, I think Una O'Hagan, oh my God, that woman is just phenomenal. The the amount of work that she's put into that pharmacy chain and everything that she does online, I just think she is fantastic. I'd love to sit down and pick her brains and say, right, what was your strategy? How did you do it? Um, and then the other person would be Marissa Carter. Again, she started really from, from scratch and she built up this massive brand, Coco Brown, and she just pivots all the time. And I just think that, you know, both of them as well, they show real life on their social media um, accounts. And, you know, they show that they're also mums and they have to do the, the grocery shopping and the washing and, you know, the school runs. So, um, yeah, it's kind of seeing people build businesses like that to see how they got to that level. Level, I'd love to talk to them. So uh, one day, I'm sure. In fairness, I think we have some incredible women in this country who have done and are doing amazing things, starting businesses really out there on, on a global scale, which is it's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it's so inspirational to me too. So your favorite quote, what would that be? So my favorite quote is my own quote. <laughs> Um, and basically it's no one will create the success for you you have to go and do it yourself and I apply this to everything I apply this to money to my relationship to everything like no one will hand anything to you on a platter you have to go and you have to put the graft in so when I'm bleary eyed and it's like 10 o'clock at night and I'm creating whatever on Eventbrite or I'm making up artwork I'm always reminding myself no one's going to do it for you you have to put the work in yourself and to this day it, it stood to me so um I'll keep going with it and I'll keep reminding myself well I have to tell you that is just an amazing philosophy to live by and something that I would encourage a lot of people to do in the work that I'm in helping people to really actually just get that very thing and what I would be saying to people is about taking full responsibility mm -hmm. for yourself so that is really what you're describing but you're also describing something that I like which is 10 two letter words if it is to be, it is up to me. Oh, and yeah. I remember hearing that many years ago. I mean, just 10 two letter words, so simple, but it's so true, isn't it? And it really kind of sums up what you're saying. But I have to ask you, obviously having that kind of inbuilt uh, awareness, if you like, who would have been the most influential person in your life? Could you name one, two, three? How many people would you say influenced you to have that kind of attitude? Because I mean, you, you certainly yeah. can be born with it but it can be knocked out of you but certainly it would seem that it's very strong within you so what caused that or who you know what the the person that influenced me the most in my life and continues to do so is my mom she is just amazing she has this uh, presence about her when everyone meets her they just think she's fabulous first of all she's incredibly glamorous and she wouldn't leave the house without her face done and her makeup but she's just she takes so much pride in herself, but also growing up, she always told me, if you put your mind to something, you will do it. You're capable of everything. You know, you're well able, even when it was down to going to school and doing exams. And, you know, if you were had a tough time personally, she's always been the one who pushes me forward. Um, yeah, she's the one, like, she's just been an amazing, like, support. And also, you know, I think if I hadn't become a mum to my son, myself, mum tribe wouldn't be here like that. You know, everything that I went through, if I if he wasn't here, mum tribe wouldn't be here. So those two people yes. are, are what, just what, what, they're my go son? to. And what's your son's name? Callum. Callum. Beautiful. Yeah. But look, isn't it wonderful to hear that? And do you have siblings or were you an only child? No, I have siblings. Um, yeah, I have a brother and a sister. But uh, yeah, my son is an only child and we are one and done, um, you know, for various, various different reasons. And I think as well, you know, that kind of a, a topic needs to be discussed a bit more within mothers. You know, I think there's an awful lot of pressure on people. You know, when are you going to have the next baby? Yeah. I do think that when I come back with my response, no, we're, we're very much happy as a family of three. Uh, a lot of people go, oh, sorry, you know, I shouldn't have said that. But it's, it's no, a funny one. I, I think it is a very important conversation because from my perspective, you know, I had a certain amount of guilt that I didn't have a, a sibling for Finn because he was a twin and I'd lost the twin at 12 weeks and the journey was a difficult one in my own case. But um, there was a, 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 tr a tremendous amount of guilt that he hadn't got the little playmate, the little sibling, yeah. you know. But um, certainly I think that's there's room for that. Now, the only reason I was asking you about, you know, sibling, where did you come in your family? I'm just curious to know where you. OK, I'm the youngest. 
so uh, by 13 years and 11 years so I really I was the surprise after yeah. Christmas uh, yeah I'm born in September I uh, very much like a surprise not planned <laughs> so, wow. Wow. yeah no, that's wonderful. But I suppose would, that would suggest to me, without divulging your mother's age or anything, that she may have been an older mother. Like she I was, was. Like I was, yeah. 40, I was 41 when I had my son. But great advantages, I think, to being an older mother too. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, disadvantages in, in some ways. But I suppose the advantages for me, certainly, if I can just share that right now, would be that I had done an awful lot of the kind of hell raising and the parties and I was kind of partied out and ready yeah. to kind of just, you know, ready just to settle down for this wonderful experience that was motherhood with the trials and tribulations. And, you know, I too got fed up much as I wanted this child for many, many decades. Um, you know, I, I soon got fed up with Bob the Builder and Rory, the racing car. <laughs> that, was, that was in vogue when Finn was a little lad, you know, and then you realize, actually, there's more I need to do. That's a whole different story. But um, I, I just think, you know, again, the pluses as well is that there's hopefully a little bit more wisdom within the older yeah. mother, too, as your mother was even able to impart with you. And then you're passing it on. So it's great to have that. It's, it's just an amazing thing. And of course, I have to say, I'm the teenage boy, and really, he keeps me on my toes. I mean, it's a bit of fun, there's a bit of rap music in the background. In fact, yesterday, he got a virtual reality. Oh, wow. And um, I mean, I'm not joking you, he put it on and I was squealing. I couldn't believe it, it's amazing. So <laughs> it's like being in a simulator, and it's like, if you've ever been to any of those fun parks like Universal Studios, it's literally like you're in the scene. So this dinosaur comes at you. Oh my God. Do you know what? It was just, it was terrifying and exciting all at once. So again, what does that do for me? It keeps me young at heart, you know, and it keeps me really on my toes. And, and I do love that aspect. And so I like to stay abreast of what he's at and just keep it keen interest. I think it's important. Would you agree just to at least be aware of what's in their world so that at least we can keep the conversation going? 100% for sure I mean my mom and dad will always say that that I've kept them young I'm sure I've I've aged them in ways as well <laughs> that they, they'd rather not share yeah but, um, yeah I mean like my mom my mom had two almost teenagers when you think about it when I was born so she'd gone through everything and I think she probably approached motherhood with a confidence that other mums would love to have so yeah. you know she went through everything and um I guess when I grew up at the age I was and my siblings were at their age I almost felt like I was a, an only child to an extent as well um, and yeah. so I, I've applied that to me being a mom to an only child and I totally can get what you're saying about the guilt I get guilt all the time especially through lockdown when we couldn't see anybody and yeah. um, yeah. it was very hard and I'm sure you say the same it doesn't matter what age your child is you're always going to worry about them of course um, yeah. but at the same time you know having siblings doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be constantly surrounded by by people as well you know I mean everyone has their own path so but look, I'm, I'm, I'm actually the eldest of six children you know and so and I had four brothers immediately after me and then my sister there's 15 years between us so I was more like an auntie to my sister than an actual yeah. sister now that gap has been bridged obviously as we've got older but you know look Certainly recently with a teenage boy at home and this, an only boy and an only child, it has been difficult because of mental health, you know, concern. Yeah. But in fairness, thank you, God. And I'm so grateful as well. First of what I what I share with him, he is very balanced and, you know, he's had great fun. And so I've been more lenient when he's been online, for example, you know, playing games and that, because how else are they supposed to communicate so exactly. I've definitely, you know, I've definitely um, stretched that boundary, that rule, I suppose, has changed. But guess what? At the time of this recording, it's back to school tomorrow for six weeks for him and his peers and his junior start. And of course, it's been cancelled, but his school are choosing to put them through the exams just at a local level. Okay. So I think it's a good thing. And uh, he might not agree. But, you know, just before we go, I want you to talk about the event that you have, because you have many events coming up on, on Mum Tribe. And of course... You are on Facebook, you have your website, you're on Instagram, which is probably your biggest platform. But the Donald Skihan uh, event, can you just share with us a little bit about that and how it's helpful to the moms that are listening? 
Yeah, of course. So like probably you and me, we do an awful lot. We're very much time poor. I want to get everything done. And, you know, no matter what, we want to be the perfect moms. We want to have the, the perfect dinner and our, our children and our family eat it. Um, so basically, Donald Skeen, I mean, he's a household name. I don't even need to introduce him. He's fantastic. Oh. And like you said, he's a dad to two kids. Um, he came up with this platform. So basically, you can go on it. Uh, you have a look through all the, the meals and the recipes that he has. You pop it into a meal planner so you know exactly what you're going to cook for the week. Then that creates an automated shopping list and it, it's broken down even into the aisles that you have to go through in the shop, which, oh my God, that's just amazing. I just thought that was fabulous. Yeah. Um, then you generate that list, you go do your grocery shopping and you come back and then you have Donal, not physically in front of you but on a screen guiding you how to cook the meals so um yeah when I heard about it I just thought it was fantastic and basically what the event is is we're going to have um, a four-month subscription for people if they want to try the platform but also we're going to be talking face-to-face -face, well face-to-face -face, through screen with Donal um just all about you know his tips and what it, what an actual chef cooks for his family because you can be a chef and you can have a toddler who won't eat your meals so I'm just I'm really interested to pick his brains and kind of yeah. get you know those those really simple tips that he can give us to make yeah, everything it, it's fantastic we're speaking from actual experience so you know he can give you all the little uh the cheat the cheat sheets if you like yeah. hide the vegetables or whatever else that in case the case may be what's the name of his platform as a matter of interest Donald's Kitchen Okay, lovely. Yeah. Um, and so the event is on the 20th of April. And 20th, yeah. the tickets are available on your website? Yeah, they're on our website. They're on Eventbrite as well. Um, if you go onto our social media channels, you can see we have a link in bio on our Instagram. You click there, you can find the link if you don't want to search on Eventbrite. Um, yeah, we have a newsletter as well if anyone wants to sign up for that because obviously our subscribers get um, special special offers and special discounts before anyone else i do have a discount code for your followers or anyone Please, who's yeah, share it and we'll, we'll also so, add it to the link go ahead perfect so um it's mum tribe group and that gives you 10 percent off your ticket tickets are 39 euro and that gives you the subscription to donald's kitchen for four months plus our live event with him so yeah i'm really looking forward to it it's fantastic you're doing amazing work so one final question for you erica Buckley of Mum Tribe Ireland. Um, what's next? What excites you about the future? So I, I have a five year plan and in my five year plan, I want to grow Mum Tribe so that it's like the number one community in Ireland for mothers. I want mothers who are pregnant, trying to conceive postpartum, you know, in different ages and stages to have the support that they need. And I want us to be the go-to group for all of that um you know i'm really open as a person i'm always trying to evolve and change and improve things with myself as well as with mom tribe so yeah i'm just going to keep at it i'm going to get more support in for everything that i want to do so i can finally get some sleep and uh, yeah just keep going basically that's just, look that's what we have to do at the moment we just have to keep going well, if we it's, want about, it's about having the vision isn't it it's about yeah. having the vision and something to aim towards so I really admire your a true inspiration Erica and it's just fantastic I'm sure everybody that's listening and watching this episode will agree um, and I just want to thank you very very much for being our guest today and uh, wish you every success going forward with your plans your vision and your mission um, you're certainly helping a lot of mums and don't forget the dads too they need your help <laughs> <laughs> when your little Callum becomes of, of an age perhaps where he chooses it or not to be that parent you know that's what I always think it's so important isn't it that the boys can't be left out and Absolutely. so wonderful and I just want to say to everybody thank you for listening to the episode today and if you would like to be a guest if you're on a mission if you're a woman on a mission I would love to hear from you so please reach out to me uh, through my social media too and the website or if you know somebody who you'd love to hear from on this show, please reach out and let me know about that as well. So I want to thank you so much for listening in today, everybody. And I hope you've learned plenty. Thank you so much. And I'll see you again on the next episode of On A Mission. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this show so that you will be notified when the next episode is released. And remember... 
Keep believing you're amazing and you have so much to give. Now is your time.